Hello, my name is Jonathan Cuthbert and I'm a technical marketing engineer in Cisco's intent-based networking group. Welcome to the third video in our multi-site remote border series. In the first two videos in this series, we went over terminology, the problem being solved, various design considerations, and a live deployment. In this video, we'll jump right into the verification. If you're unfamiliar with the terminology or the deployment steps, please review those earlier videos. This is a reminder of our topology. We have four fabric sites where we have deployed the guest virtual network. The guest VN is anchored in site 5, which is our DMZ. In remote site 1, site 3, and site 9 are all anchoring sites for this virtual network. Verification will occur on an edge node in site 3. What specifically are we verifying? We want to verify that the virtual network is associated with the multi-site remote border. Said another way, the guest virtual network in Site 3 should point to the border and the control plane nodes in Site 5, our DMZ. Why am I listing the loopback zero addresses? If you are unfamiliar, this is how we build overlay or tunnel networks in SD Access. Traffic is tunneled between the loopback zero interfaces of our routers and our switches in the fabric. I'll pause for a moment if you wish to take a screen capture, although I will have this displayed on screen as we go through the verification. Here are the commands that we'll be looking at today. I will show you these live and I will help correlate the information in the output. In another video on this channel, which I will link in the summary below, I've discussed list instance IDs, what they do, how they work, and how to use the CLI to determine the Lisp instance ID. Here are those commands. I won't be going through these commands again in this video. I've actually already used these commands to determine the instance IDs that you can see here, which I will also have on screen as we go through the verification and the correlation. I'll pause for one more moment if you wish to take a screen capture. Okay, let's jump into the live system. Our live demonstration is shown on a Catalyst 9400 series switch in Site 3. The switch has been provisioned as an SD Access Fabric Edge node, and multiple virtual networks have been configured in the Fabric site, as you saw in the second video. We have the Site Local virtual network called Canvas, and the virtual network that we are anchoring called Guest. Using the verification commands shown a moment ago, I've already determined the Lisp instance IDs, as you can see over here on the far right. To really have an understanding of what's happening, though, it's best to compare and contrast. And that's why I have two SSH sessions opened to the same device, so we can look at some of this output side by side. Here on the left, we're going to focus on the campus virtual network. And on the right, we'll focus on the guest virtual network. Let's begin by looking at the output associated with the campus layer 3 instance ID. That command is show lisp instance ID. Our instance ID number, in this case 4099, IPv4. Go ahead and control C break this and scroll up to see what information that we can glean. This is instance ID 4099 and it is associated with Vera of Campus. This is exactly what we would expect. Now there are three key items that we really want to look for. We have the ITR map resolver and the ETR map server. Both of these are referring to the control plane node functionality. And we also have the proxy ETR, which refers to the border node. Now in another video on this channel, I went through the various border node configuration options. This is an excellent video to review, so I will also link it below. Proxy ETR refers to the border node that has the external functionality. If you're unfamiliar with that term, please go back and review that video. What you need to know is that all the border nodes in this particular series have been deployed as external only, so you're going to see them appear in the proxy ETR output. So let's go ahead and begin with the map server map resolver section. ITR map resolver, ETR map server. And both of those are pointing to 192.168.30.101 and 30.102. Looking at our legend over here on the right, we can see those are the site local control plane nodes. Under the proxy ETR section, or the border node section, this virtual network is configured to point to 192.168.30.7 and of course 30.8. Those are our site local border nodes. Let's take a quick look at the Lisp Layer 2 instance ID that's associated with this VRF. We might need to do just a little bit of correlation here, and we can do that with the show VRF brief command. 
If we look at our campus VRF, we can see interface VLAN 1034 is associated with it. That means VLAN 1034 is also associated with it. Let's look at this from the perspective of the Lisp instance ID, and I'll tie this back together here for you. So that command is show Lisp instance ID. In this case, our layer two instance ID, which is 8195 ethernet. Scrolling up, you can see instance ID 8195 is associated with VLAN 1034. This is exactly what we would expect. Now let's look at our key elements here, beginning with the ITR map resolver and ETR map server. Again, that refers to the control plane nodes 192.168.30.101 and 30.102. Of course, these are pointing to our site local control plane nodes, exactly what we would expect. We don't have a proxy ETR listed. You can see that's not here on screen at all. This is also expected. Bear in mind that to communicate outside of our subnet, we need some sort of layer three element. But what we're looking at here is a pure layer two. So there's no concept of a gateway of last resort communication from the perspective of the Mac layer. So let's go ahead and contrast this against our guest virtual network. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and scroll up here on the left so that the uh, layer three information is here. Um, beginning here on the right, let's look at the layer three instance ID for our guest virtual network. Of course, we should already know the command by now. Show Lisp instance ID. Our instance ID number, in this case, is 4100 IPv4. Control C, break this. Go ahead and scroll up one more time. Instance ID 4100 is associated with VRF guest. Absolutely expect that. Now let's look at the control plane node information or the ITR map resolver and ETR map server. Where is this virtual network configured to point? 192.168.50.1 and 192.168.50.2. Looking at our legend, we can see that's the DMZ over there at site five. For the proxy ETR, or what is actually our multi-site remote border, Here's our proxy ETR. We're pointing to 192.168.50.1 and 50.2. Again, that is the border node over there in site five, even though we're looking at a device here in site three. Now you might wonder, why do I see 50.1 and 50.2 here under the border and the control plane node? That's because we have co-located the border and control plane node on the same device. That means we deployed both functions on the same devices. Let me go ahead and scroll down the guest layer two, or excuse me, the campus layer two information over here, and let's look at the guest layer two output. Again, let's do a quick correlation. We'll do show VRF brief. We can see our guest VRF, the interface associated with that, interface VLAN 1040, which means VLAN 1040. But let's do this from the perspective of the instance ID. So show Lisp instance ID, our instance, our layer two instance ID in this case is 16225 Ethernet. Scrolling up, we see our instance ID and the VLAN that we would expect, VLAN 1040. Let's look at our key items, ITR map resolver and ETR map server. Again, those are talking about the control plane nodes, 192.168.50.1 and 50.2. That's exactly what we would expect. So what is the takeaway message? What piece of information should you walk away with? We have multiple virtual networks configured on the same device. Over here on the left, I'm showing you information related to the campus virtual network. Here in the campus virtual network, we are configured to point to our site local devices. On the right, I'm showing you the guest virtual network or the virtual network that we have anchored over here in site five. And what you can see from this output is that this virtual network is configured to point to the border node and control plane node devices over in site five. So they use the multi-site remote border or the anchor border node and anchor control plane node. This concludes the live portion of this demonstration. In this video, we contrasted the site local virtual network configuration against the anchor VN configuration on an edge node that was hosting that anchor VN. 
By doing so, we verify the configuration of our multi-site remote border, or our VN anchor configuration. I hope this video series has been very useful for you, and thank you for watching.